Welcome to Module 6, Lesson 20, Real World Area Problems. Okay, now this is the um, first, um, first lesson in uh, Topic D, and Topic D um, is all about uh, problems involving area and surface area. So, you, know, you guys entered uh, Grade 7. Um, having studied area in uh, in several grade levels, okay, this idea, this concept of area, you know, height times width, okay, this um, idea, this two-dimensional um, calculation. Um, we have actually the th in in these lessons, um, in these next few lessons, twenty twenty one twenty two, and then twenty three twenty four. Um, some of these are going to be similar to those we did in Module 3, um, in that we are looking at mainly composite figures, you know, those, those figures that have been put together with other shapes, with several shapes, some with who have holes or missing sections um, in them. Um, that's Lesson 20. Uh, figures in Lesson 22 are a little bit more complex so they will um, be, you know, become more challenging to determine. And um, then in Lessons 23 and 24, um, we will transition from area to surface area again. But these are not concepts you are unfamiliar with, okay? Um, we'll just be going, approaching them in um, a different, different way, I think. Anyway, well, let's get started. So here we go. Um, find the area here, opening exercise. Find the area of each shape based on the provided measurements and then explain how you found each area. Okay, so I am going to just assume that you know how to find the area of these shapes. Um, but what I would like you to do is pause now go ahead and um, have a go at this. Um, whatever you don't remember, don't worry. Just um, just come back and we will do um, each one together. Okay, so um, here we go. Let's go ahead and go over these. Um, the first one here, we can see we have a triangle and we have a few dimensions given to us. Okay, um, but firstly, if you did remember, uh, hopefully you remembered the formula for a triangle, and that formula is, of course, half base times height, because if we actually drew a uh, similar triangle on top of this triangle, um, you see we come up with a parallelogram, okay, um, which is, of course, base times height, and that's one that we'll do right next to us here, the uh, one to our right. Um, but yeah, so we have that, um, half base times height, and we've, we've been given both. Okay, so we have our base, we have our height. Um, we're going to go ahead and do our parenthetical first. So that's going to be 75, and then half of 75, or 75 times 1 half, is 37.5, or 37 and a half units squared. Okay, and our next right there, uh, <clears throat> to the right, the parallelogram, we, of course, have base times height, okay? And um, we have our base, we have our height, and we have our area, 108 square units, okay? Super duper. And again, I mean, I know you've probably seen this many, many times, but the reason here, we have that little piece would actually fit over here. Okay, and create, therefore, a rectangle right there. Okay, so real fun uh, to see that. And next, how about that hexagon? What did you know about that hexagon? What do you see about that hexagon? Well, the one thing to recognize about that hexagon that is most important is that it is what is called a regular hexagon. Okay, a regular hexagon. And um, <clears throat> what a regular hexagon is, is a hexagon with um, equal sides, 
okay? So it's an equilateral hexagon in a sense, okay? So those are all the same, um, the same length, okay? Those, each of those um, line segments that make up that hexagon are all the same length, therefore it is a regular hexagon, okay? So what that means is everything is the same, therefore they've given us a triangle here, okay? So which is wonderfully gracious, okay? So if we have that triangle, we know that all of these triangles, because this is a regular hexagon, are all the same, okay? So all of those are equal. So therefore, you can imagine what we can do. We could just go 6 times 1 half base times height. So what we're actually doing is we're actually taking this formula and we've plugged it into here, okay, and then we've just multi we're just multiplying that by six because we have six of those little triangles that are all the same right down there, okay? Um, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, calculate that. And next, oh, well, I just calculated. So what I'm gonna, what I do, of course, is I'm going to go ahead and multiply six times 5.2. And then that times one half doesn't matter. I mean, again, we're talking about multiplication. We have our commutative property. Um, we can uh, do them in any order. So we did all that, did all that, and then multiplied all that by six, and we got that 93.6 units squared. Okay. All right. And the last one is our semicircle right there. A semicircle, and you know, a circle. What is the, if you recall, the circle area calculation? Our formula is pi times r squared, okay? r, of course, being radius. <coughs> Excuse me. Therefore, we have one half. One half, of course, because we are talking about a semicircle, which is half of a circle. 3.14, which is pi. And in this case, times 4.5 squared, okay? All right, so we have to multiply that by 4.5 squared because we know our diameter. <clears throat> they've given us the diameter of 9, and therefore we know our radius, which is what we need here, is 4.5, okay? So go ahead and do all of that math. <clears throat> and um, I went ahead and figured out the area first of the entire circle, which is this right here, okay? 4.5 squared, then times 3.14, and um, that's all going to be multiplied by 1 half, or divided by 2, which gives you 31.79 units squared. Okay, so again, hopefully just a little bit of a refresher there um, to see um, to see what we, what we know and what we remember. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and move on to um, our... First example here, example one. A, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just read this to you, and then I want you to go ahead and do what you do, okay? And I want you to go ahead and figure this out um, as much on your own as you can, okay? I, I know you can do it. Um, and again, this harkens back to module three, um, where we did uh, very similar similar activities, okay? So just. Uh, pay attention. Uh, keep in mind there um, there um, there are several things to consider, okay, and there are alternative ways to figuring this out, to solving it, okay. Um, but let's go ahead and read um, <clears throat> read through it. So a landscape company wants to plant lawn seed, okay. All right, um, a twenty pound bag of lawn seed will cover up to 420 square feet, okay, so you need to know that, of grass, and costs $49.98 plus 8% sales tax, okay, and again, all of this, I think, should be coming back to you now, remembering from the past, okay, um, so a scale drawing is given here of the rectangular yard, all right, it's right over here. Um, the length of the longest side is 100 feet. Okay, and you can see that right there, 100 feet. That is this side here. Okay, and then this side is going to be the same. All right. And uh, the house 
driveway, sidewalk, garden areas, and utility um, pad are shaded. Okay, so all those different shaded colors are all of those different areas. So the unshaded area has been prepared for planting grass. Okay, so that's all you need to know. That's every single dingle thing you need to know to figure out the following. Firstly, how many 20-pound bags of lawn seed should be ordered? And secondly, what is the cost? And again, total cost. So just remember, remember to keep that in mind. Okay? So go ahead, work it out, slug away at this one. Um, I know you can do it. I know you can do well. And uh, come on back, and we will go over it um, with me. Um, I will go over it together uh, step by step. Okay, well, let's see um, see what you did with this. Um, so firstly, what I wanted to figure out, and because I wanted to right from the beginning, I didn't want to convert at the end. I wanted to um, convert right away. So I knew that um, there were 20 lines that um, moved across here, 20 lines right across there. Okay, and if I knew that they were 100, uh, that was 100 feet in total, all I had to do was divide by that 20. Okay, and I came up with my five feet per line. Okay, so I knew that each each line across each section there was going to be five feet. Okay, and actually each little block or each little um, square, okay, and it would be five by five. Okay, all right. So I just wanted to get that that done right away. I don't know if you did it that way. If you waited till later on. You know, not not quite sure, um, but that's what I did first. Okay, and then what I started doing is I went ahead and I blocked out different sections. Okay, so I blocked out different sections. You saw those lines I just I just drew there. Okay, and I'll just put this like this here. Okay, so I just drew there, so you can see those sections that I did. So here are the here are the lines I drew. If you didn't notice it, that one, that one, that one. That one. So I'm just creating here. I am creating um, a bunch of rectangles. Okay, rectangles that I can easily um, calculate their areas with. Okay, and again, this is this whole idea of deconstructing. If um, if you remember, decomposing. Um, we talked about um, in module three, I think. Again, um, taking this larger, larger um, area and um, decomposing it. Um, taking it apart and um, creating different pieces. So from there, it's um, pretty smooth sailing. Um, it takes a little time, but pretty smooth sailing from there because then I go ahead and what I'm doing now, as you can see, um, I'm using my conversion, you know, each line being five feet, and then I am um, just writing down my dimensions for each separate area. So this little that area right there is uh, uh, 35 by 20, okay, because there are seven... Um, seven line, uh, seven sections this way, each one five, so that's 35, and then four across there, and that's 20, okay? So, and again, I'll just continue to do that. So that section there is uh, 20 by 65 feet. Um, this one over here is um, 15 by 40 feet, all right? And then on and on, a 10 by 10, 15 by 40, 30 by 25, another 30 by 25, and then a 20 by 35, okay? So now I have all the dimensions of all my different um, different sections. And then all I need to do here now, again, is, so right there, if that, that area right there, that little section of grass, painting them in here in green, is going to be 700, uh, 700 square feet, okay? So that's what that is over there. So again, I just move across, do the same thing everywhere, that's section 1,300 square feet, 600 square feet, 100 square feet, 600, 750, 750, 700, okay? So there we have every section. So I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I created 8 sections. You might have done it differently. Um, you, know, you could have actually done maybe all of this, all of the um, the um, the non-grassy areas and and figured it that way, okay? That would have been good as well, and actually it might have been faster than 
than my way. I'm not sure. But anyway, I did that way, and I did that, add all those up, and I know I have 5,500 square feet. Now, that is not an answer to any of the questions quite yet, but it is the figure, the number, the value that is going to get me to these, um, these answers, all right? So, and the first question was, um, a 20-pound bag of lawn seed will cover 420 square feet. Okay, so how many of those bags am I going to need if I know each one covers 420 square feet? All I do is divide by 420. Okay, 5,500 divided by 420. So that's going to give me how many bags. Now, as my answer is 13.1 Okay, I can't buy 0.1 of a bag, um, but I do need 13.1 bags. Therefore, I'm going to have to purchase 14 bags. Okay, so 14 bags are needed, all right? That is the answer to that first question. How many 20-pound bags of lawn seed should be ordered? Okay, and that would be 14. Second um, part um, is uh, what is the cost? And uh, each are 49.98. And then you have 8% sales tax on top of that. And again, if you remember how to do that, set up my equation there. I'm going to multiply everything by 1.08 because the 1, of course, just accounts for the, um, the price. And then the 0 0.08, of course, is that 8% sales tax that I tack on. Okay. And again, of course, it's going to be 14 times 49.98, which is my 14 bags. And figure all that across there, and I get seven hundred and fifty-five dollars and seventy cents as my answer. Okay, and uh, hopefully you got somewhere close, um, at least close to that. Okay, and um, again, you might have done it a different way. You may have just uh, taken, like I said, taken away the paved paved bits, and then figured it that way. Um, if there's something you're having trouble with here, you don't understand, again, don't hesitate to call. Maybe just go back and look at it. Um, maybe remembering how to, all these things coming back, this is kind of a review of sorts. Um, just remembering, you know, you have to, to account for your sales tax. Um, this is a great way to do it. 1.08 just takes everything. and it's, you, know, you multiply anything by that, you're going to get that total, you know, plus your 8% sales tax as well. Okay, so uh, there you have it. I hope you did well. Let's move on. Okay, here's exercise one. Um, and it says here, a landscape contractor looks at a scale drawing of a yard and estimates that the area of the home and garage is the same as the area of a rectangle that is 100 by 35 feet. 100 by 35 feet. The contractor comes up with 5,500 feet squared, okay? How close is this estimate, okay? Now, no, this is a really silly problem, I think. But I'm just going to just go over it. Do you, quite, do you see? I mean, it's kind of hard to understand, and <clears throat> I don't really know what they're driving at here. But anyway, so I guess he looks at this, um, he looks at this scale drawing of a yard, and he estimates that the area of the home and garage is the same as the area of a rectangle that is, um, you know, 100 feet by 35 feet, okay? But then he comes up with 5,500 square feet, okay? So, I mean, if he's going to, if we're going to figure the area of this out, of course, that's 100 times 35, which is 3,500 feet squared, okay? Um, but the real figure is that um, he's 2,000 square feet off. Okay, and didn't do such a great job. All right. And that's all there is to that. I don't know why they did that, but maybe just seeing if you if you knew what to what to look at and how to get uh, square feet. I don't know. Let's move on. Okay. <clears throat> 10 Here's example 2. 10 dartboard targets are being painted as shown in the following figure. The radius of the smallest circle, oh, this would be a fun one, is three inches, and each successive larger circle, <coughs> excuse me, is three inches more in radius 
than the circle before it. A can of red and white paint is purchased to paint the target. Each, can, each 8 ounce can of paint covers 16 square feet. Is there enough paint of each color to create all of the circles? I'm thinking that says it just covered it. To create all 10 targets. Oh, 10 targets. Okay, we need, need to make 10 of them. Let's see here, 10 targets. Okay. All right. So that's, the, that's uh, yeah, there you go. So they need 10. They need 10 targets. Okay. All right, they need 10. All right. And um, <clears throat> you got the radius. A small circle has a radius of uh, six, uh, no, three inches. Okay, so three inches there. All right. And then each successive circle, so that's a small circle. And here's another circle is the red. Okay, I guess the red is going to be another. This one here is another circle. Okay, and then you have another, another one out there. And then another one out there. Okay, so you have... Looks like one, two, three, four different circles painted. This is, uh, oh man, this is pretty confusing, huh? <clears throat> but anyway, see what you can do with that, huh? Play with it, have fun with it, come back, and we'll do it together. Okay, so I hope you were uh, successful in your pursuit of this answer. Um, it takes quite a bit of time to do something like this, and maybe you had a little bit of difficulty getting started. Um, if you did, um, and you really haven't gotten very far yet, um, maybe you can go ahead and pause as soon as you see something that I'm doing that looks um, looks interesting and looks like it might help you, okay? So, firstly what I did, I went ahead and um, looked at this picture of this target as a series of circles, okay? So if I look at it as a series of circles, I have C1, there's my C1, that's, that's my first circle, and that circle is just that, um, that white area in the middle. And that C1 has a radius of 3 inches, which I know, okay, and um, therefore my area. And I'm keeping this just in pi, pi units here, so I have 9 pi inches squared, okay, um, because I've already done my, my um, just again to reiterate here, but, you know, area, of course, of a circle equals pi times r squared. Okay, so I'm doing my r squaring right here, okay, therefore I have my 9, okay, so I've taken care of that, and just leaving my pi, um, so what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll convert that, or I'll um, plug in my 3.14 for my pi later on, okay, and you might have done it right away, okay, either way is fine, either way is fine, I'm just Cho I've chosen to do it this way. So, then I have my C2, okay, which is uh, covered by that area I've, um, I've uh, circled in uh, purple, and that's the entire thing. Now, that C2 also includes C1, okay, which is very important, okay, so that's a, a larger, larger circle. That is C1 and C2 are all, that that's together, so C2 includes that white area and the red area, very, very important, okay. And uh, therefore, I have an area there, so that is um, a 36 pi inches squared. And right now, I could um, easily, um, easily calculate, um, which I'm not going to do quite yet, but I could easily calculate what that C, what my, um, that red, that first red circle right there, um, this red, um, let's see right here, this, this red circle right um, right here, this red circle, this one right here, okay, I could now calculate what that's actually worth, okay, or what, what the area of that is, okay, because I have what the larger area is, which is 36 pi inches squared, and I know that C1, that smaller blue, blue area there, is 9 pi inches squared, and I would just have to do some subtraction there, okay, but we're not going to do that yet, because we're not quite interested in that interested in something else. So let's just continue. And now we have C3, which is a larger, even larger circle. And again, it covers that entire area. And as we know, um, the uh, radius keeps going up by 3. As you see it going up by 3 here, versus 3 inches and 6 and then 9. And that was stated in our problem. Therefore, the, um, 
the area of that is 81 pi inches squared. One more, which is C4, which is the entire circle, okay, from the outside edge through the middle, okay, including every single point there, um, and that is 144 pi inches squared, okay? So now I have all of that, and that's all I need to figure out um, the area of the um, white paint and the red paint, okay? Because we're trying to we're trying to come to a conclusion as to whether there is enough paint in one can of white and one can of red to uh, do the job. And again, the job includes, just to remember, 10 of these, not just one, but 10 of these um, dartboard targets, okay? So let's go ahead. Next is going to, we're going to look at the red paint, okay? Let's just start with the red paint. We're going to figure out the red area, the red paint area on one target, okay? So the red paint area, um, the way I do it is I can take the entire, the entire um, board, okay? And that's that 144 pi inches squared, okay? And I'm going to subtract out C3, which is that next smallest, okay? And if I subtract that out, now I know, what I come to know now is that outside the outer red ring is 63 pi inches squared, okay? 63 pi inches squared, all right? I know that because I've taken the entire circle, the entire disc, let's say, and I've subtracted out that other one, which was uh, C3, and now what I'm left with is the, um, the actual calculation for the, um, that outer ring of red. I right. sure hope you understand what I'm saying. Anyway, that's 63. Now, I can go ahead, because I want to find out what that, that inner red ring is, okay? And so I'm going to take 36, which is that um, the um, C, size of C2, okay, which again is included right, right here. This is C2, okay, this entire thing, all right? And then I'm going to subtract away my C1, which is this small inner circle there, okay? And what I'm left with is 27. So I know now that that ring is 27, so let me clean this up a little bit, 27, um, so I want to get back there, okay, let's do that. So it is uh, 27, so now if I add both of those up, okay, I'm sorry, this one, this one went away here, this, is, uh, this was 27, the 27 plus the 63, okay, I get 90 pi inches squared. Okay, so it's 90 pi inches squared right here. This is what um, is the area of the red paint in one dartboard target. Okay, and we'll work with that again later, but let's go ahead and figure out our white paint first. Okay, clean that up a little bit. White paint. So now white paint, all I need to do, and again there are a number of ways to do this. I mean you could do it um, a different way. You might have chosen a different way to do it. Um, but what I figured is that all I need to do, actually, is take the entire board again, um, entire target, which is 144 pi inches squared, and just subtract what I know. I know 90 pi inches squared for the red, therefore I'm left with 54 pi inches squared, okay? And that's my white paint. So now I have um, the area in inches squared, or pi inches squared right now. I'll have to do some converting. I have to um, work with these, but this is my first step. So now I know the area of both the red and white paint um, on one target, dartboard target. Okay, so if I move ahead here now, let's go ahead and work with the red point, the red paint only. So the red paint, what I know about the red paint is that I need 90 pi inches squared per dart, uh, per target, okay? So let me go ahead and just go ahead and plug in my 3.14 for my pi, okay? And again, um, the reason I can do this here is um, because I've already done my radius squared, okay? I've already done my radius squaring, um, and that's how I got my, that's where my 90 comes from because I did all that before, okay? So um, that is actually 282.6 inches squared, um, which is a great number, okay? Great number, but the issue with that is that it is, um, we are looking, um, 
what we know is we know that each can of paint um, holds um, holds um, 16 square feet, um, enough paint to cover 16 square feet. Therefore, we need to do some converting. All right. And I'm going to show you, you might have remembered this. I don't know. We, we did do this in the past. A um, little bit tricky in a sense because um, what many of us will do is say, okay, well, 12 inches equals one foot. So I can go ahead and just divide 282.6 inches squared by 12 and get my answer. Well, the issue with that, of course, is that that is way too many square feet, by the way, 23 Point five five square feet, okay, um, for a dartboard target. Um, but besides that, is that we are talking about, this is the issue, we're talking about squared inches, okay, and squared inches, what do you do, how do you get something, how do you square something, well, you multiply it by itself, okay, so in fact, we would need to go ahead again, divide it by 12 a second time, and therefore, we come up to our answer of 1.96 square feet, okay, is what that red paint, um, how much red paint you need for one target. Now, again, what we could have done, a little shortcut, okay, is we could have just gone ahead and taken our 282.6 inches squared and divided it by 144, okay, which is the square of 12, okay, because we are talking squared units, all right? And hopefully that makes uh, makes sense to you, okay? All right, so there we go. We have that. Let's move on. Let's look at our white paint. Now with our white paint, we have 54 pi inches squared. We go ahead and multiply by 3.14. We get our inches squared, okay, 169.56. And now we know, again, using that conversion, 12 inches equals 1 foot, we know now, because we're talking about squared units, we go ahead and divide by 144, which is 12 squared, okay, or 12 times 12, and we get 1.18 square feet of white paint per target, per target. Okay, so, um, the important thing here, though, is we need to remember, and let's go ahead and look at this for both of them, um, an 8-ounce can, this 8-ounce can covers um, 16 square feet, okay? So that's, that's what we have in, these, in this can, okay? 16 square feet. Now, we need 1.96 square feet um, per target. Now, we're just going to multiply that by 10 because we have 10 targets to do. And now we have, what, 19.6 feet squared. This is what we would need to, um, to cover all 10 targets. And as you can see, we do not have enough. Okay, so we do not have enough. So not enough red. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and look at white. And again, um, the can, this 8-ounce can, covers... 16 square feet, and we need 1.18 feet per target. Multiply that by 10, and we get 11.8 square feet is what we need. And yes, we have enough white, okay? All right, so, yeah, and there, there are our answers, okay? We have enough white, but we do not have enough red. Okay, so um, in summary, here we go. Um, one strategy to use when solving area problems with real-world context is to decompose drawings into familiar polygons and circular regions. Okay? All right, so this idea of decomposing, very, very important. Again, I think I wrote this many, many times last time um, in Module 3 when we were doing this before. But yeah, to decompose, take things apart, like the, the targets. I mean, I hope some of you thought about this. Maybe you didn't, but just going ahead, if I want to find out 
you know, the area of this one here. You know, I could find the area of the entire thing, okay, and then find the area of this smaller one here, and then I would know what that one is, okay? So again, decomposing and doing, using strategies such as, um, such as that with the circular regions, the targets that we, we did in this, um, in this lesson. Um, since area problems involve real-world context, it is important to pay attention to the units, okay, needed in each response, okay, and that was a bit tricky with the one with the can of paint because um, the can of paint, they were talking in square feet, they were, they were um, you know, how many square feet one can could cover, um, but we were getting our answers actually in square inches um, because we were using a dartboard that was, um, you know, the inches were given to us. I mean, we could have converted earlier, um, <clears throat> but then there would have been a lot of decimal confusion. Um, but anyway, so we needed to convert uh, before we could actually answer our question um, with some uh, reliability. Okay, well, there you go. That's lesson 20. Um, come back again for lesson 21. We are getting closer and closer to being uh, finished with this uh, seventh grade year of math.